This lecture is part of a series of lectures for RAD 229, MRI Signals and Sequences offered in the Department of Radiology at Stanford University. The seventh lecture on signal-to-noise ratio is divided into three parts. Lecture 7a covers single-channel noise and SNR measurement. The learning objectives for this lecture are to understand noise statistics in K-space, complex images, and magnitude images, to explain when the distribution is Gaussian, Rayleigh, and Ricean, and to know basic methods to measure SNR. To introduce the concept of signal-to-noise ratio, signal is the desired uh, component of an image, and noise is interference. Most of the noise comes from thermal noise and depends on a number of factors, including the coil and the patient's size. And we can see this picture at the left here, where you see the signal as a vector and the noise as sort of a, a cloud. And this is a distribution, a probability distribution of where the signal might be altered to. If we look at images, you can see examples on the left and the right of a low signal to noise ratio and a high signal to noise ratio. And the impact of having noise is that it can make it difficult to depict boundaries in images or other features in images. So you can see that noise has sort of a speckly type pattern and is random. Briefly, let's look at the origins of signal to noise ratio. Again, we generally assume we have body noise dominance. This means that we've done the best we can with our hardware and we're now limited by the subject that we are imaging. This is a formulation for signal to noise ratio that is a function of some constants, the object and the imaging parameters shown by the three colors here. And if you look at this relationship, the key part that we're going to focus on for this course are the imaging parameters. And at the rightmost part of this equation, you see that the signal to noise ratio is proportional to the baseline resonance frequency or Larmor frequency, the voxel volume, and the square root of the A to D time or acquisition uh, time. If we look at the signal uh, equation and how noise is uh, added to the signal equation, first consider that noise is zero mean, it's complex and additive. So if we look at the signal equation from lecture two, we see how noise adds in here. The signal is the integral of the object of the magnetization times the complex exponential here, that is basically k-space encoding. This is integrated over the whole object, and we have added an additive noise here that is independent of where we are in k-space. The additive noise is complex valued, and it's Gaussian. So the noise has a real part and an imaginary part. Both of these are Gaussian distributed with a probability distribution as shown. So the overall probability distribution is a simple product of Gaussian distributions for the real and imaginary components as shown here. Notice that the standard deviation sigma or, or square root of the variance sigma is the same for the real and imaginary component here. Now, if we look at how Gaussian noise uh, propagates between k-space and image space, we can first look at an, a scaled Fourier transform or inverse Fourier transform as shown on right, where the Fourier transform sum is scaled by one over the square root of n. So these are in one dimension here. And you see that uh, the, this is the forward and reverse Fourier transform here. And if you do this, the noise statistics are preserved between the image domain and the k-space domain. Again, you have additive complex noise. It's Gaussian, it's zero mean. The sigma is equal to the sigma for the real and for the imaginary components as shown here. And the sigma in the image domain and k-space domain will be identical. So let's look at an example here to verify the noise properties. So in this example, we will make up some k-space noise that is complex Gaussian noise. We take a Fourier transform and we calculate statistics for the varying signal. Here is the MATLAB code. 
So the sigma is 1. The number of points here is 256. And we're going to generate real valued and imaginary noise that is 256 by 256 here. We add these up uh, in K space. We take the Fourier transform to form image space. And now we can look at the, um, we've scaled this by n instead of square root n. And we can look at the standard deviation of the real part and of the uh, imaginary part of this image. We can calculate noise as a function of the signal to noise ratio here in a loop, where we take this, basically this noise image and we add to it a given signal that ranges from 0 to 10. And what we'll be able to see here is that uh, the, first of all, if we look at K space and the image here, you see again that the noise distribution does not change between K space and image space. Now, if we plot the magnitude image here, so we take the, again, we take the complex noise and image space in this loop, we add to it a constant that's between 0 and 10, and then we take the overall magnitude. And what we see here is that at low signals, the, the standard deviation is actually less than 1, so less than expected. But as we approach an SNR of between about 3 and 4, we notice that the standard deviation approaches 1, which is what we would expect for Gaussian statistics. And then you notice we can look at the bias, which is basically what is the mean of the, uh, the, the, the measured mean um, of the signal here um, minus the signal that we've actually added in here. And you see that at low signals, there's a bias of about, um, it's actually a square root of pi over 2, just over 1.2, and this bias slowly goes to 0 as the SNR increases. And a key point to note here is that above an SNR of about 4, the standard deviation of the signal approaches 1, and the bias is about 0.1 or smaller. So we can really approximate the signal, at, the magnitude signal as Gaussian at the signal to noise ratio. So let's look at a question example. So if the case base of an image that is 128 by 128 is all ones, and the noise has parameter sigma of one, what is the SNR at the center of the image? And what is the mean of the magnitude background image. So the answer here is that noise transfers without scaling. So it has sigma equals 1 in the image. The signal at the center is the sum over 128 by 128, and it's normalized by n here, or 128. So that means that the signal to noise ratio is 128. The background mean is sigma times the square root of pi over 2, or about 1.2. So now let's look at some basic probability distributions for noise for single channel cases. So if we take the real part of the signal, it will be Gaussian. And this is because we've taken a Fourier transform. If we take the magnitude of the background, this is actually Rayleigh distributed, okay? And the Rayleigh distribution looks something like this. You notice that the mean is no longer zero, um, and the signal, the distribution is not purely Gaussian anymore. And in fact, if we slowly add a little bit of signal, we can see how this distribution transitions from the Rayleigh distribution at the far left towards a Gaussian-like distribution again at an SNR of about 4 or higher. We can also play this movie where you see that the fitted Gaussian here fits very well above an SNR of about 4. We can back this up. You notice at the beginning we have a Rayleigh distribution. The, fit, the Gaussian fit is actually pretty good, but there's considerable bias here because this should be zero mean. And again, as, as the signal increases, the, the uh, Gaussian fit uh, looks very good above an SNR of about 4. So this brings us to another question. 
So intuitively, why is the noise distribution for magnitude images almost Gaussian for reasonably high SNR? So the answers, the possible answers here, A, the quadrature noise has minimal effect on the magnitude, B, the noise is real valued in image space, C, the image and noise are in phase. So the best answer here is A, that the quadrature noise just does not affect the magnitude very much. So when we take the magnitude, it doesn't change very much when you have quadrature noise. And this means that the dominant noise is the in-phase noise uh, that is uh, itself Gaussian. So next we look at basic SNR measurement using a single coil. And this is actually a fairly easy task, but some corrections have to be made. So what you can do to measure signal to noise ratio is you want to estimate the signal by measuring the mean in some signal area, ROI or region of interest. And then you want to measure the standard deviation of the magnitude in, in a background region of interest. You can also measure the mean in a background region of interest. And either way, you have to correct for the Rayleigh distribution in the background. So it looks like this. We place a region of interest in the background to measure the noise and we can measure the mean of the Rayleigh noise here, which is 1.26, or we can measure the standard deviation of the Rayleigh noise, which is 0.65. This corresponds to a Gaussian sigma of 1.0, and in fact, if we do these correction factors, you see that the estimated Gaussian uh, sigma is about 1.0 for both cases. So you can either measure the mean or the standard deviation of this background noise, and this gives you a very good estimate of the noise. Now, since we know that the noise is, uh, is uniform across the image because it was uniform across k-space, we can now measure the signal to noise ratio because we know the mean signal somewhere in the foreground and we know the background noise. And the signal to noise ratio is simply the ratio of these. We can also do another approach, which is the difference method SNR. So in theory, if we take multiple measurements, this should give you a population, and in each pixel, you get roughly a Gaussian distribution. So with two measurements, you can still estimate the mean and standard deviation, as has been done before. So we still want a signal-to-noise ratio over about four, or we will underestimate the noise with this approach. So it looks like this. Here we have a sum image and a difference of magnitude images. We can place a region of interest here, and we can look at any pixel here, and we can take the uh, difference of these magnitude images and find that it's about a square root of two. And if we uh, divide this by a square root of two, this gives us the Gaussian variance, or sorry, Gaussian sigma that corresponds to the, the noise sigma here. And again, in this case, the noise sigma was in fact one. Okay, so this brings us to another question. If you acquire an image three times and the standard deviation of the magnitude signals is 0.5 and the average signal is five, which of these answers is correct? Okay, and the correct answer here is B. Above an SNR of about four, the Ricean distribution looks Gaussian. So this method will work really well and we basically uh, take the signal of 5 and the standard deviation is 0.5. And by measuring the standard deviation of these signals, we've simply measured the Gaussian sigma parameter. And recall this plot here, where the, the curve on the far right looks uh, very Gaussian. Okay, so to summarize this lecture, the noise in k-space and complex images is complex and Gaussian. Magnitude image noise has a Ricean distribution when there is a non-zero signal or mean. It has a Rayleigh distribution in the background, which also has a non-zero mean, of course. The SNR can be measured by measuring the foreground and background and correcting appropriately or using something like the difference method. So the next question is how do different setup factors and sequence parameters affect the SNR? And for this, you can watch lecture 7b.